Hi, and welcome to the podcast. This is Golf's Next Gen, the official podcast of the American Junior Golf Association. My name is Tim Jackman. I am the Vice President of Communications. That is Thomas Harrison. He is Director of Tournament Operations. And producer Justin is back there behind the camera putting all of this together. So uh, we're just going to really get into it today. We have a great guest lined up. Jasmine Koo is going to be joining us. Thomas, uh, quite the decorated junior golfer. Yeah, a lot of uh, cool stuff we'll get to go into. I mean, coming off that great finish at Anwa, finishing fourth. Um, a lot of our juniors in that field, but again, she's one that's been around for a few years. We've had the chance of interacting with over the years, so um, got a chance to root for her. So you're coming down the stretch, a couple of great fist bumps in there. So really excited to get the chance to have her on the pod. Yeah, she was a play representative on our board of directors, which is pretty cool to get an opportunity to kind of influence some of the policy of the AJGA. So, uh, b- but first, before we do that, I have a couple things for you. First question for you today that I'm going to bring for you. Okay. Um, <clears throat> this is a would you rather. Would you rather wear Wyndham Clark's shirt that he had on during Masters Week, that first one? Okay. You visualizing the shirt no, I'm, I'm talking aware. About? I'm very aware. Or would you rather wear Adam Scott's just khaki outfit? Give me the Adam Scott all day. <laughs> you show up in that thing and you mean business. Like that's a guy, he's been there before, he's won it, he's ready. <laughs> you know, we, we obviously have Adidas as our uh, global sponsor, which we're very fortunate because we get some awesome pieces, kind of like the one that you have on right now, actually. The- Wouldn't it be nice to have one of these, Tim? <laughs> this piece right here, for those of you who don't know, I really love this piece that Thomas has on. And if you're not watching the video, you need to go watch it because it is such a good Adidas piece. And it was only given out at one specific tournament, and it was very exclusive. And there was like one extra, two extras. And Thomas has one, and another staff member has one. And he just wears it, I think, to drive me crazy so i do i intentionally wore this today <laughs> so uh, we're very blessed to have adidas we uh, as our clothing attire sponsor but i was just very curious as to your take on those those two outfits from the masters week i mean don't get me wrong i love if i'm just going out to just play around myself probably the wyndham clark if i'm showing up trying to win the masters give me the all khaki just <laughs> let them know it's not it's not about the flash i'm just here to get the job done love it love it all right what do you got so Going off of the Masters and Akshay Batia, big win this past week to punch his ticket to the Masters, um, it kind of got me thinking. Obviously, he was one of our players of the year. Doing a little bit of research on, you know, like how much does that success translate? Obviously, he's so young. He made at the time what was kind of a controversial decision to turn professional um, rather than going to college. And here a few years later, it's obviously kind of paid off for him. He's winning so young. Um, But I was able to track down an article from a few years ago. Um, that ran the numbers relating to our first team All Americans and the success they'd go on to have. I've read this um, article. It's yeah, awesome. so yeah, see, great article. Not doesn't have all the most up to date data. Like I said, it's a couple years old now, but still, I think these numbers, if anything, have probably just increased based on the success we've seen. Um, but at the time this was written, there were 237 different players, um, different male players that had been AJJ first team All Americans, and of those 237. 20% of them went on to win on the PGA Tour, and 4% of them won majors. But where it gets even crazier is if they were an AJJ All-American for multiple years, that number jumps to 47.6% of them have won on the PGA Tour, so or 12% that won majors. So basically, 50% of our multi-year Rolex Junior All-Americans were winners on the PGA Tour. And it's it's one of those things that seems like every week now, it seems like that number's growing. I feel like we look at the leaderboard and um, shout out Adam Rogers, our in-house historian, he's always got the Twitter fired up, ready to give the shout out to the, the X, AJJ the alum. X fired up. Twitter. Um, but every week he's able to fire off this person finished. Mm-hmm. They won this event. They finished top five here. They whatever they were able to do. So I'd be interested to see now, and I'll probably have to do some research on my own and see if we can get some more updated numbers in uh, future episodes. But looking at it and just saying 50% of those players that we see walk across that stage are going to go on and win professionally is absurd. (laughs) That's like, you can't even picture that. Yeah, and it's kind of playing into a, a new segment we're going to do kind of later on with our executive director, Stephen Hamlin, who's going to who's going to kind of talk about some of these players. And he's got some great stories from some of these these past, you know, winners, past uh, players who have gone on to pro success. Um, but that I mean, that's just crazy. Fifty percent of your multi-year Rolex Junior All-Americans. That's crazy. Crazy, and that was what you said, 2018. 2018. So yeah, we've had. A, I mean, that was six years ago, and yeah. I can't even imagine that numbers probably jumped even so much more now. I mean, just look at the the younger players. I mean, that is not even accounting for what 
we've we're at like 80 percent of the winners on tour this year have been ajj alum so i mean that's that number is only going to go up yeah just crazy something to see and i know we looked at we were talking about before we hopped on here at the masters over 50 percent of the field ajj alums eight ajga rolex player of the years that are in that field um, so we're definitely seeing that success translating but i feel like it's just only going to continue to grow here as we go down the line in future years yeah 100 percent. dang that was a good that was a good i told you i, I came ready <laughs> <laughs> uh, my the thing i brought actually is kind of interesting and involves some stats 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 too um with some former uh, alumni and actually tournament hosts so i did a little bit of digging and it's kind of been an anecdotal thing that we've had around here where when a professional player announces or hosts their first AJJ event, we have over 20 of them every year um, between the, the men and the women. Uh, they, they have a lot of success in their professional career after that and in that same year. So I did a little bit of digging, and it actually is kind of like shocking what I found. So um, I'll just run through this list really quick. And these are all players who, in their first year of hosting an AJJ event of giving back to, to these juniors. Um, and these are, that's, these are their stats. So Justin Thomas had five wins the season that he hosted his first event. Jordan Spieth had five wins the season he uh, hosted his first event. Sergio Garcia won the season he did. Uh, Patrick Reed had two wins the first year that he hosted his event. C.T. Pan got his only PGA Tour win the, right after we announced his event that he actually couldn't come to his event um, that he was hosting because he had he was had won that he won that week, which is crazy. Um, Taylor Gooch hosted his her first event in 2023, and obviously the year that he had last year. Um, and then Nelly Corda, with this absolutely dominant stretch that she's on, started basically when she announced that she was hosting the Nelly Invitational um, with TaylorMade. So uh, obviously. It, Take it as you, I'm not really a big karma guy, but you can certainly see that there's some really interesting stuff, uh, correlation when it comes to winning and hosting and giving back to these juniors. And I think the flip side of that is also like we're getting the best pros to host our, our juniors. And it's just such a great, um, a great experience for our juniors, some of these pros who are hosting. Yeah, I mean, what Nelly's doing right now is just out of this world. It's absurd what she's doing, watching her week in, week out. Um, kind of like you said, it, those talks start, not that she was ever off track, <laughs> but she lost number one for a little bit. And <clears throat> that seemed like something was going on that she was number two in the world, not number one. But then as soon as she reclaimed it, she's just never looked back. And it certainly doesn't look like she's ready to look back anytime soon. So, um, I'm certainly very jealous of everyone who gets to go to the Nelly. Um, that's going to be such a cool event, um, having her there, having her involved, um, especially for those juniors. I mean, getting the chance to interact with somebody like that, hands-on, have them there watching your game. I mean, I'm sure there's going to be some nerves associated with that. <laughs> right. Um, I mean, my tee shot would not be on this planet <laughs> if she Mine was standing anyways, there. so it's fine. <laughs> yeah, no, I'd like to think I'd like to think we're fine in the fairways right now. <laughs> Shout out to QI10. Uh, but, I mean, what she is doing is just unreal, so... Yeah. Super cool to have her involved. And like you said, all those former players, uh, it seems like maybe that's just something that can kind of relax them a little bit. They kind of get back to their roots and see that. And it just kind of maybe there's something mentally there that just kind of clicks for them. And they see that they're helping with uh, the future of golf and moving on, translating it into their own game. Yeah. that I know we talked on the last one about a Nick Dunlap a little bit, but I think – you know, Justin Thomas specifically mentioned at like his first or second one they hosted, like, I'm going to be competing against these kids are going to be beating me in a couple of years. And how funny that is literally like three years later <laughs> that Nick beat him in that, <laughs> that final round. Mm. So that's, that's pretty cool. Okay. I got one more question for you before we, we get Jasmine on here. Um, what would be your master's champion dinner? So this, it's funny that you bring it up because it's a conversation that um, a few of us had yesterday down um, in the operations department. Because I look, I'm sure everyone sees the post every year. It's like rank these masters dinners and you're just looking at everybody's um, right off the bat. I think I'm a huge like appetizer dip guy. Um, so I'm going to have to feature like a, a big spread of dips. I'm talking like buffet table full. Get a little spinach artichoke in there. A little spinach artichoke, buffalo chicken, some corn dip. You know, we got um, a lot of different things going on there. Um, Guacamole. Oh, the guacamole out of this world. I'm probably bringing my own, though. I'm very particular, so I'm probably making my own guacamole. Um, but then getting into that main course, I've kind of gone back and forth. 
I just love Mexican food, whether it's fajitas, something like that. So I've kind of gone back and forth between do I go the classic steak? You and Tiger steak? both, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, the guy knew how to do it. I mean, he's number one for a reason. So um, I think I'd have to stick with fajitas. I've gone back and forth. You know, being a Midwest guy, it's hard to beat a good steak. Um, but probably some fajitas and then for dessert, um, whatever Marianne is cooking up um, out here. Because For those of you who don't know, Marianne is our executive assistant and the AJJ mom. Um, and she does birthday desserts for every single staff member, all 75 plus of us. So um, we are very fond of Marianne and definitely fond of her desserts also. <laughs> I mean, it's anything she whips up is the best dessert I've ever had. So um, shout out to Marianne. Love Marianne. Everything she's done. Thank you very much. But um, probably yeah, bringing her on site to round that out with a dessert. But how about you? You're uh, a nice family man. You do a lot of cooking for the kids. Does that factor into this decision at all? <laughs> it kind of does. You know, I was, I was kind of looking back at them and um, some of the. There's been a lot of steak that's been done, especially over the last five years, which I think. Well, okay, let's start with with appetizers. I I also love some some good dips. I mean, a good buffalo chicken dip, like yeah, give me that. I think I would probably have to do some dips. That would that would certainly have to be an appetizer there. Um, I'm not a big salad guy, but you know, if you need to throw a salad in there, that's fine. I'll take, I'll take a good Caesar. That's fine. Um, as far as main course go, like I'm definitely going steak, like 100%. Give me a big old juicy filet. Uh, definitely going to do that for the main course. And I mean, maybe some chicken for those who don't want the red meat, but, um, <laughs> seems just like a poor choice. Though. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. It was Rip the bubble Watts when I was, grilled chicken. when I was looking at like the past ones, it was like, there'd be like three or four and they'd have these big old long descriptions of all of them. And then it was like, I think, uh, Patrick Reed was like two lines. <laughs> and I was like, come on, you gotta get a little more creative. Bone in cowboy ribeye. <laughs> right. So then I think for dessert, I don't know. That's really hard. I'm a huge ice cream fan. Um, so maybe nice ice cream Sunday or, um, so the skillet cookie that mm. was done what last year or two years ago. I mean, that, that looked phenomenal. I, I mean, if it's a dessert, as long as it doesn't have coconut in it, then I am all about the dessert. Yep, no, so I'm with you there. Whatever it has to be, but the no coconut, please. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's funny because I thought about that, and then I also thought about how satisfied I would be if it was like, can we just bring in chilies? <laughs> <laughs> really throw them off. Just imagine everyone the sitting there. Fajita in, guy, huh? in, in the green jacket. No, the triple dipper. Again, shameless plug, but it's so good. But. Just imagine that everyone's in there in the green jackets and then they just bring in the chilies truck and are just right there. So going back and forth, but <laughs> I do kind of wonder if like, I don't know, I feel like my tastes, tastes aren't quite fancy enough for some of that stuff. That's why like, like Scotty Scheffler's like the barbecue and the, everything that he did seemed Mac and cheese. I mean, that seemed very much right up my alley. So yeah, now some of these things you're reading the descriptions. I'm like, I don't know what that is. <laughs> I'm not confident that I would be able to guess what that is. So yeah, I'm a simple man. Again, give me the dips. Give me some fajitas, whatever dessert. If it's Marianne's brownies, again, I'll eat an entire tray of those brownies. Yeah, so, that fudge, fudge Not frosting. too worried about it. Oh, geez. Okay, awesome. Well, uh, let's go ahead and transition to Jasmine here, and let's uh, bring her in. So, Jasmine, how are you? I'm good. How are you? We're good. I'm glad you parked the car. I was a little worried there. You're going to be driving and doing this. <laughs> no, no, it yeah. feels very, like, actually podcasty, though. I feel like they do that all the time. <laughs> really? I don't know. That that seems dangerous. Yeah, I have a senior assassin. Do you know what that is? <laughs> is that like the game where you play where like all the seniors try to like take each other out and the last person standing type of thing? Yeah, like the Nerf guns yeah, like or like the, the water, water guns. guns. Yeah. Yeah, like um, today's like, or my target, like she just stays at home all day. So like I'm driving all the way to her house this morning. <laughs> that's what, yeah, I was like, that's why I was like, oh, like, is this going to be edited? Because like, I might have to like get out of the car. <laughs> no, we're keeping that on the podcast. I mean, actually, that seems like it'd be awesome. <laughs> that's a thousand percent staying on. If you can take the phone with you though, so we can get like body cam footage, that'd be great. <laughs> Oh, Dick, that's awesome. Well, welcome to the pod, Jasmine. Thanks for joining us this morning. I know it's kind of early out there for you. Yeah, it's okay. I'm like jet lagged too, so it was fine. Uh, yeah, you coming coming back from Anwa? Mm-hmm. Nice, nice. Well, why, I guess that's probably a good place to start, Thomas. Why don't uh, Why don't you just tell us about tell us about Anwa a little bit? Obviously, you had a great finish there. What's What was your uh, just kind of your, some of the highlights? Would you really enjoy out there? Um. Okay, like just on the surface, it's like the grass is really green at Augusta and it's like super pretty. 
right? That's just like on the surface. But then like when you play that course, like it's like you almost wonder like what is like how is the brain built of the person that like built this course? You know, it's like you have to think so much. Like you're always guessing with the wind and like where like every single hole in T-Box's place is like like it's like wow like it's literally bewildering and then like obviously on the last day like I feel like golf wasn't real like I started the round off with like bogey double bogey and then I made like two eagles and I was like yeah (laughs) yeah definitely looked like you settled in but like you said you step up on that first tee and there's just that has to be the most surreal feeling like what's going through your head as you're actually on that first tee you hear your name announced and you just step up and address that first tee shot Mm -hmm. well um Obviously, you're under so much pressure, but, like, honestly, you're just supposed to, like, I try to enjoy the pressure, if that makes sense. Like, I just try to be, like, oh, like, I'm here for a reason, you know, like, I'm going to hit a good shot. But then there's also, like, the bunker on the right, and you're, like, oh, don't go in it. There's so many people watching, like, but um, I just try to focus on, like, flushing it, which I didn't, but, like, it didn't go in the bunker, <laughs> so... <laughs> little wins <laughs> yeah we uh so we had actually had a staff member who was down there kind of working in and she was uh she did mention that you had those two eagles that's pretty awesome what that was the only time that there's been two eagles in a in a round at the anwa and and you did it at augusta which is pretty crazy talk about those two holes a little bit mm-hmm. so um if i know correctly i think ingrid lindblad did it once too like three years ago but um My first eagle was on eight and like um i think like this was after i went like i was three over for the day and i was like looking at my caddy and i was like oh like i'm three over at this point because we were supposed to lay up that was like our game plan but i was like we're three over like might as well just like go for it it's like it's like it's freaking augusta like i'm gonna just play to like have fun you know and then i flushed a three with to like 20 feet and i was like oh yeah and then um what was the other one hole 15 that was crazy because i threw like a fist bump and then the crowd went like wow <laughs> you know so yeah that was like yeah that was surreal for real yeah i know it was you mentioned like these weren't tap in eagles i mean it seemed like every time the broadcast cut to you you had a little bit of meat left on the bone there on some of those putts and i mean you were just making these big breakers how much of that came from, you mentioned your caddy, is that something where you were getting that read yourself, you're working with the caddy on that, or how much do you rely on somebody who has a little bit more knowledge of that course? Uh, so it's actually funny because, like, for me, like, I was, like, it was, like, a 50-50 on, like, whether I believe my caddy or not, whether I take my <laughs> line or his line. Wait, who was your caddy? Um... Kobe, I don't know what his last name. He never told me his last name, but okay, gotcha. He, local caddy. Yeah, local caddy, and yeah. um, yeah, um, at Champions Retreat, like I think I read the greens a little better just because he's a caddy at Augusta. So coming into Augusta, like I didn't have like you know the hundred percent trust, and then um, but like we got there, and then my caddy would be like aim way like two feet higher than I what, what I thought, right? And I'd be like, really? And then, like, it'd be right. So, um, what is it? On hole eight, I, on hole eight was my first eagle. Yeah, so I used my own read because his read, I was like, I thought it was, like, too low, which was weird. But I used my read, and then I made it. And then on hole 15, I was like, this is a right edge putt. And he was like, no, um, it's like a big cup out and I was like really yeah and then he was like yeah just trust me on this one so I trusted him and it was like middle of the cup like in (laughs) and I was like wow yeah no I mean it was definitely fun to watch on our end obviously having you um, you've been around the AJGA for a few years been our player rep and we've gotten the chance to know you pretty well so um, definitely had a lot of people cheering for you here as you climb up that leaderboard but you mentioned being three over you try to make a push do you are you leaderboard watching at that point are you kind of looking seeing where you're where you're moving up the board you can't like not look at the leaderboard at augusta (laughs) there's just like no way you can't it's a big big white screen on like every (laughs) hole and it's just you can't not look at it honestly um 
my name fell off for like a good nine holes, but you know, I was still looking at like these girls where they were at, how close I was, you know. Um, but usually when I look at the leaderboard, I like I start making bogeys, but it was different this time. What uh, what was did you have kind of a favorite memory or something along those lines from Anwa and Augusta and kind of that whole experience? Was there kind of a moment that stuck out to you? Mm-hmm. Um, a moment that stuck out to me. I think um, probably like hole fifteen. That eagle putt on hole fifteen was like it was crazy. I just like I just loved every part of it. Like you know, I was make I was able to make an eagle under like the pressure of that many people watching. Some of my friends flew down too to watch me play, and uh, you know they were all hyped. And like the fist bump that I threw, that was hundred percent natural, by the way. So <laughs> you weren't playing it up for the camera. No, no, that was, <laughs> that was just pure. Mm, yeah. No, it seems like you've had a lot of fist bumps lately. You've been on a really good run here, um, winning the AJGA Invitational, presented by Ping, finishing second at Rolex, and now fourth at Anwa. Um, as you're kind of winding down your junior career, what kind of confidence does that give you, knowing that you're really playing some of your best golf right now, heading into college? Mm-hmm. Well, they say like the best junior golfers make like the top college golfers. So obviously, like I have a bunch of confidence. I think um, it's like weird because there are different generations. Like in the AJGA, there are different generations. It was like it was like you know the Rose Zhang generation, like the four generation, and then there's like our generation is kind of in the middle of like the twenty sixes, like the upcoming generation, and like them, but like. When I go to college, I'm going to play with, like, all of those older kids, right? And, like, I feel like they are definitely better in many ways, more experienced, like, stronger. So, like, it'll be it'll be interesting to compete against them. But, like, after Anwell, like, I think uh, my conference definitely went up, like, to see how I'll compete against them, yeah. Yeah, it's really interesting to see our... Our rankings, I think, right now are very spread, very much in transition, kind of like you were saying. So that's that's pretty interesting. Um, that's kind of a perfect segue. Talk uh, talk about girls golf in general. I mean, obviously with Anwa, that is that has elevated girls golf and, and women's amateur golf um, a lot. Can you talk about the AJJ and, and some of the ways that you feel like the AJJ has really helped to elevate kind of girls golf over the last few years as well? Mm-hmm. I mean, like AJJ is like the mecca of junior golf honestly like there is no other better like organization than AJG out there and I feel like that's kind of just universally known to like every like even in the world like just every junior golfer and um you know if you think of a place where the best junior golfers are gathered in the world it's like AJGA and like you get to compete against these girls that are like the best and you know basically like exactly where you stand out stand at like in the fields um I think girls golf one thing about girls golf in particular is that like the friendships that you make in AJGA are like the friends that you're gonna have for your life you know it's like that's so cool what's so cool about AJGA is that like it builds bonds that like you can't build anywhere else which is I which I think is amazing really yeah the I was just thinking about Thomas about like some of the different stuff that we've kind of done at the AJGA specifically. I mean, you've got our end of the year honors are 50, 50 girls and boys. You've got um, invitationals kind of going that way with our mixed gender 50, 50 fields and some stuff like that. So Jasmine, I, I think, is there a particular girls only event that you have kind of loved on the AJGA schedule or is there a particular event in general? That's just kind of like your favorite from an AJGA standpoint. Um, I'm trying to think. Rolex Girls was really fun. The one that I played like two years ago, the one that um, Caitlin Schroeder won. That one was really fun. Oh, the Annika was really fun. Um, the year that Anna Davis and Yana Wilson was in a playoff. That year, like, um, there's like this patio where like everybody eats and there's this huge glass screen that like shows whole 18. And then it was like, when Yana hold out for Eagle, it was like, it was kind of cool. Yeah. I don't know. It's not even me, but like, it's, it's like a memory that sticks to me. 
Um, but girls events, those two. Um, Rolex TOC is always so much fun. Like it's it's always like, and Wyndham, you know, Wyndham is like my favorite tournament ever. It has to be. No, it's always a good one. And kind of going back, like you mentioned, I think the friendships that we see that most of the girls make. I think one of the coolest things that I've noticed here at my time at the AJGA is when the girls champion sinks that last putt. There's a huge crowd of competitors on the green. You guys are all celebrating. Is there a point where you kind of flip the switch at all? You know, you hit that first tee and it's more so, all right, we're competitors. And then when does that kind of turn on and off? Because it it looks like you guys do have so much fun out there. You're all hanging out, talking. You love to celebrate together and it's great to see. But is there any time where you kind of have to sit and think to yourself, like, all right, I've kind of got to turn it on here? Mm -hmm. Um. I have a perfect example of this. Um, when I won ping, you know, Yana was right, right there, right behind me. Um, I think like, um, first thing that we got there, I think we didn't really talk much, you know, of course we were like, oh yeah, good luck, play well today. Like we always do. Um, I think like we would talk when like there were breaks in between shots and stuff like that. But like, you know, we were competitors for the 18 holes that, or 17 and a half holes that we played. On 17, on 18 fairway, we were walking down, and I think I had like a three shot lead at this point. She comes up to me and she's like, "If you win, can I like spray water on you?" And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> "I was like, yeah." So that's when it turned off. You know, you had to know that was coming, though. I feel like the boys are always just like so serious. They're like fist pump and then like a high five. But the girls, like you said, are just literally all over the green, just throwing water everywhere. Is that like uncomfortable to get so soaked afterwards and then just literally be wet for the rest of the day? <laughs> um, I actually like it. Like, it's just like, it's like the celebration, you know? And it's like, yeah, I feel like the boys just think it's cringe. Um, <laughs> That's why they don't do it. But yeah, it's like they should hop on the trend, you know. <laughs> do you ever just find yourself out there making fun of the guys when like you watch them hole out, they win, and then it's just, like you said, it's just kind of blah. They're just, I won, all right, let me walk off the green head to scoring. Because I feel like it'd be kind of hard to not throw a few jabs at them. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, we in Ennis, that guy when he won, he literally, like he didn't do anything. He just like picked up his golf ball. That's all he did. And then he smiled in the photo holding his trophy. Barely smiled. Barely smiled. Yeah, barely smiled. Yeah. You said it was natural at Augusta, but have you ever like practiced the fist pump? Have you ever just kind of been like, all right, I need to have this ready for the cameras? I think I have. Like, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I, I've never like stood in front of a mirror and practiced it. Like, you know, but... um. I've watched like on YouTube, sometimes I'll watch like top 20 fist bumps on the PGA tour <laughs> and I'll be like, oh, I see how they do it. <laughs> you know? That's good. A student of the game. <laughs> the things you got to ingrain it into the system. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Uh, kind of some along, along the girls golf path, Jasmine, obviously you've got Nelly Corda, you know, sponsoring the Nelly Invitational coming up. You've got Rose Zhang, who everything she's done for the game. Like, what is having people or like Michelle Wee involved with the Mizzou America's Open? What is having those successful women involved in the junior game? What does that mean to you as a junior golfer? Um, I think like over the years, I realized that how spoiled we are as AJGA kids. Um, we've literally got the biggest names in the world, like sponsoring our tournaments. But then that also kind of says like, yeah, we're on the right track, you know, if that makes sense. Like, we're just on the right track to, like, becoming the next, the future generation of stars like they are. So, it's pretty cool, yeah. And we get to meet freaking Nelly Corda, so. <laughs> yeah, I'll be honest, I'm pretty jealous about that one. I was a little disappointed I'm not going there. But um, you talk about being the future generation of golf. I've got to ask for a prediction so we can come back to this in a few years. You're on the LPGA tour. What year do you win your first event? Hmm. Um, That's a good question. Okay, so it's 2024. 
I think Correct. I don't want to like, underestimate the AJG or anything, but like I am a pretty confident person. <laughs> Let's Love see. It. If it's 2024, maybe like end of 2026. Okay. I like it. Yeah. Two years. I think like you're my going the Nick Dunlap first. approach there. Yeah. Like sponsors invite, just like <laughs> get a bang. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I love that. I love that. Uh, so you're looking forward to going to the Southern Cal. Why don't you talk about that uh, a little bit, college, kind of what you're looking forward to transitioning out of junior golf? Mm-hmm. Um, I'm like sad and happy to leave junior golf. I think I've been a junior for so long. But then again, thinking like this Wyndham Cup is going to be my last is like kind of sad. Um, USC. It's like, like, I really love that school, but every time I hear my teammates talk about their homework, classwork, I, like, don't want to go anymore. But then, like, I talk to my coach, and then I'm like, oh, yeah, I want to go. Uh, what do you, are you, have goals for the rest of your, your junior career? I know you've got a, a few more tournaments, right, on your schedule for the rest of the year, junior-wise. Mm-hmm. I'm playing two more AJGAs, the Mizuho and then the Polo, maybe to win one of those for sure. And then um, if my junior schedule, just like enjoy the last half year, honestly, because this is going to be my last summer. I'm going to just enjoy the bonds and connections that I made because some of these juniors are not going to college. So I might have to part ways with them for a little bit. And, uh, yeah. Well, no, certainly, um, like we said, we've enjoyed having you around a lot of fans here. Um, we appreciate everything that you've done for the AJJ, being a player rep. And um, just before um, before you take off here, why don't you tell us a little bit about that experience as a player rep, kind of what went into that and some things that maybe you expected, didn't expect from that opportunity player rep I don't think it was like that different from normal um obviously I wanted the job because I just wanted to be more involved with the AJJ because it's like given me so much um the only thing I really had to do was like speak at the banquet and answer a bunch of like parent questions you know but like that's that's not hard that's not difficult at all so did you uh is there how cool is it that, that the AJJ even has that opportunity? Obviously, we've got, uh, we get new ones every year based off of their graduating class. But uh, talk about the fact that AJJ even has that and what kind of what that says about what the AJJ does in, as an organization to make sure the players are involved. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like it kind of just like shows how, you know, just like I can't like find a word. It just like. How do I say it? Like, AJGA is just very, like, interactive with, you know, just, like, everybody. It's, like, you know how, uh, like, high schools or, like, schools, they have, like, the student council, like, president and stuff. It's, like, it builds leadership for sure. And, like, it just shows, like, how, like, well done this organization is. Like, we have these, like, um, players who are actually playing in the fields themselves that are part of, like, the board. And then, you know, they're, like, in both worlds. So, like, the players can get a voice into the board. And then, you know, the board can also, like, have a means of communication with the players, which I think is, like, really genius. So. Ooh, yeah, no, certainly an opportunity we enjoy having you guys. Um, like I said, just great opportunities all around. I feel like that's something we kind of take pride in is how how involved we are, the chance that we get to know you guys. Um, the chance that here now we're going to be sitting there in 2026 and be like, Jasmine told us this was coming. We knew she was going to get that first victory. Um, but just kind of pivoting away from golf a little bit, just a few rapid fire for you. We just want to get to know a little bit more about you. Let everyone listen in. Um, what's your favorite TV series right now? Favorite TV series? I don't know. Like, I don't watch that much TV. But, but, um, Loki, the office is fun. Like, I don't watch it much, but like every time I watch it, it's like, ha ha ha, you know? <laughs> um, that's exactly how you laugh. <laughs> that's my fake laugh. I don't, I don't think that's a good sign. 
Um, <laughs> I watch a bunch of Korean dramas, though. Ooh, okay. Because my mom's super into it, so I just watch whatever she watches. Um, yeah, and then, like, I watch a bunch of movies. Movies is, like, yeah. Okay, so what's your, uh, what's your, what's your favorite movie lately, then? Lately? Um, what have I watched that's, like, lately? Oh, oh, um, it's not, like, I watched this a long time ago, but, like, Oppenheimer, when I watched that, I was, like, like, in awe. I was, like, whoa. You know, the main character was, like, his face was kind of creepy, but, like. I think that's the point. Oh, yeah, yeah. that's just yeah. great casting. <laughs> <laughs> Did you go see it in the IMAX? Did you get the full experience? Yeah, I watched it in theaters with my popcorn and everything. But <laughs> I was like, wow. Yeah. And it's what like, about... Go ahead. Uh, go ahead. I was going to just ask another question. What about uh, music? What are you at right now? Music? Super into Bruno Mars. Like, super into Bruno. Um, I bought like a... Or I'm thinking of buying a Bruno album because like, when I buy a physical album, like I just like dive into the music way better. But um, so you're gonna buy a CD? <laughs> yes, like an actual CD, <laughs> and then like plug, like put it in my dad's like old car, <laughs> because new cars don't have like the CD player, which I think is insane. I, like, Thomas, I feel so old right now. <laughs> my car definitely has a CD <laughs> player. <laughs> Well, I appreciate you supporting the CD industry there and buying a Bruno Mars album. I have to check that out. Still to this day, the only CD I've ever bought in my life was Akon. Mm. And it is still in my car right now. I believe in my car is currently a Taylor Swift CD. So there you go. You're Swifty? <laughs> well, it's sort of. My wife is much more of a Swifty than I am. Does it shock you at all that he's a Swifty? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Back on track here. <laughs> okay um if you had if you won the masters what is your champion's dinner menu um sushi but like not the bad sushi like the good like authentic japanese sushi um what what could i do like oh obviously like like filet mignon like you have to have that. Um, I would probably have like a vegetarian option too, because I know a lot of people are vegetarian these days. That's very nice. But of you. I can't think of one. <laughs> this is sounding a lot like Tiger's master, his uh, champion yeah, I think dinner. Yeah, was very similar too, actually. Tiger had some sushi. He had the steak. Yeah. Yeah, and I was looking at I was actually looking at that earlier. Uh, Hideki, I think, had sushi, sushimi, and had wagyu. So th there you go. It's, it's been done before. The chefs know how to cook it. <laughs> the chefs at Augusta are so good. Like the food, the food was so good. I oh my god, I think I gained like five pounds after in like one week. We there's a common theme on the pod we have about about food. I think Boston talked all about that ice cream, and now we're talking about the food with you. I listened to that. Oh my god, how is he not a milkshake guy? Like. Who is not a right? milkshake guy in this day? And That's what I'm milkshake. saying. That feels yeah, insane. I don't get free, the difference. Free milkshakes. But he's making Sundays. It's basically just like a deconstructed milkshake. <laughs> That's not, uh, it's the same ingredients, just built a little differently. Right. And the milkshake is in like a cup and you get to drink it out with a straw. So you don't have to use a spoon. It's so much more convenient. That's where we talk about. You see kids at the turn getting a milkshake and walking down the 10th fairway. You don't see a kid walking down with a big ice cream sundae bowl with a spoon trying to hit his wedge shot into the green. Sorry. Hands were a little like, sticky like, there. Wait, give me a second. I got to get the sundae. Off Anybody got a wet one? Anybody got a wet one? <laughs> That's awesome. Um, okay. Just kind of going back to your origins in golf a little bit, kind of get to know you a little bit more. How did you start in golf, and like, how did you get your start? Mm, so, um, there was this one like academy in uh, LA called a uh, Trugnan Academy, and when I was young, my parents just put me in a bunch of sports just to see what I was good at, like me and my brother. And I did like so many sports, like I did like ballet. Uh, piano's not a, I don't think it's a sport, but I did piano. Um, I did I'm golf, not very good at swim. it, so it probably is a sport. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, I can't think of what else I did, but I did like a lot of stuff. And then golf and swim were the two that like stuck out. And then I swam competitively until I was 11. And then I would just like follow my brother to the range like for golf. And then um, when I started like disliking swim, I was like, okay, like maybe I should just like do golf as like my thing. And then that's when I made the transition and then it's turned out to be a good, good choice. Yeah, I'd say it's working pretty well for you right now. I don't, I don't know too many people who are just like, yeah, I could probably do this and then go out and finish fourth at Anwa. So, <laughs> I mean, it's not like I just did it. Like. <laughs> so you didn't pick, you didn't really get heavily into golf until a little bit later then, right? Yeah, but I mean, I started like, I picked up a club at four, hmm. you know? So like, I've definitely like had like been practicing like at least a little bit and then like now and then like when I was like okay swim is done that's when I like fully dove into golf which was like 11 that age like fifth grade were you uh were you good at swimming yeah I was better at swimming than golf but like (laughs) I I hated swim with a passion like like just doing it like imagine going in a pool and swimming back and forth back and forth for like four hours and you're tired and like you don't want to do anything but like a co- your coach is yelling at you every single day and i was like i don't want to do this anymore so that's why i quit we'll see sounds like you were into some of the athletics now i've got to ask the question like last time people are arguing out there on the internet are golfers athletes jasmine what do you think yes like <laughs> Oh my god. Oh my god. I was hitting I was trying to like I was hitting like like bombs on the on the range yesterday trying to get my driver speed up. And I was like people don't say this is a sport. Like that's insane. Like I'm like blowing 5 years off my back right now just to like hit it <laughs> 1 mile per hour farther. Is it worth and it, Jasmine? Is say, it worth this it? Is a sport. <laughs> oh, yes. That's funny. Yes. To hit it 5 yards farther, it's it's worth it. <laughs> but um Yeah, I think it's um this sport is definitely more mental than other sports, for sure. But, like, if you think about it, like, physically, it's, like, there's a lot of components that you need to look at. It's just, like, not the same components as, like, football or, like, basketball. Yeah, there's mechanics to the golf swing, just like there is, the you know, throwing a football or throwing a baseball or pitching or hitting. I mean, it's all, there's all mechanics to it, and anytime you involve the muscles, I, I would consider that athletic talent. So, <laughs> um, okay. So the last question that I have is, uh, you know, as you, you're finishing, obviously your, your junior golf career, um, here coming up, you, I we just talked about kind of how you got into golf. Do you have any advice for junior golfers who are kind of going through the process of junior golf and, and playing or just getting started? Do you have any advice for them that you could relay? Mm, I think the biggest thing is to enjoy golf especially when you're young um I think I think this could be advice to the parents as well I think um you know kind of like forcing golf onto your child or like um kind of just making golf miserable as like at such a young age is like one of the worst things that you can do in your golf career it's like um I've seen a lot of kids just saying like oh like I don't like golf I'm only doing this to get into college they never really like take the transition into like good junior golfer into great junior golfer or like good you like a junior into like an amateur very well I think um you honestly just have to like enjoy the sport and like do it like find something in golf that you really like like I didn't really love golf until like um I started hitting like striking the ball well and then I really love the feeling of like flushing it you know and like I don't know what that feeling's like like, so (laughs) yeah I can't relate to that at all (laughs) I love that. I love that though. Like, you know, you're finding loving golf and uh, talk, to, talk a little bit about your parents and how they approached uh, kind of your game and, and coaching you through it. Cause it kind of sounds like based on what you're saying that they kind of went about it the right way. Yeah. I mean, my parents didn't know any, they don't, they still don't know anything about golf. Like my mom at Augusta was like, why'd you three putt? And I was like, maybe cause it's like <laughs> running at a 13 and it was like 10 feet downhill. But, um, but yeah, like my mom, um, my parents, they kind of just like, make sure we practice like in hours wise 
you know like they were very diligent about dropping us off at the golf course as a young child or like making sure we were like at the golf course every day keeping us busy but they would never like you know like they would never like stand right next to us and be like do this do that do this like 24 7 you know they'd be like oh do you want to take a break this and that but it's like they would still like push me a lot um my parents well my mom now she's just like my parents now they're just kind of just like oh yeah just like do whatever and i have like my own schedule now so well good no certainly fun to see that i do love the visual of just your mom watching you at augusta and being like why didn't you just make that butt it's so simple <laughs> <laughs> like it's like it's funny, I ask myself that same question all the time. Like, why didn't you just make that? That'd be so much easier. <laughs> oh, my God. All right, Jasmine, well, we really appreciate you taking the time. Unfortunately, we didn't get to see you take out your target, but um, hopefully good luck with that uh, today, and, and hopefully uh, you get that done. But we really appreciate all that you did for the AJJ and you've done for the AJJ and, and Girls Golf, too. Um, congratulations on such an awesome career, and, and good luck you know, in your last couple of tournaments and then certainly in college as well. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you for having me. It was, it was fun. Very fun. We're good. No, we'll certainly bring you back in 2026. We'll have the trophy on the podcast, and so it'll be a lot of fun for us. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like 2026 20, seems a little ambitious now. That I mean, Nick Dunlap did it. He did it. He was less than two years away from playing his last AJJ event when he won on the tour PGA Tour. So I feel it's possible. Okay. Yeah. If there's a will, there's a way. You know? That's right. Exactly. That's exactly. You right. got this. <laughs> All right. All thank right, you Jasmine. so much. Thank you. Have a great rest of your day. Yeah, you Thanks, too. Thanks, Jasmine. Bye-bye. Right, so thank you very much to Jasmine. Um, great interview there. She was so much fun. Glad we could get her on the podcast, take time away from her um, high school activities there, playing a little assassin. So always fun, but certainly someone you love rooting for. She's just got so much energy. She's just such a kind person um, that certainly, again, someone we look forward to seeing success out of in the future. But um, with that, we'll go ahead and head to our next segment. Um, Tim, we're going to try something new here. Why don't you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, so as I alluded to kind of at the beginning, um, we have a lot of pros who come through the AJGA, and there's a lot of stories from their junior days. And I've been here 10 years, you've been here three plus years, and we have stories, but nothing like our executive director. Stephen Hamlin has been around for just about every pro you could name that's that's gone through the AJGA. So we thought it might be cool to have him kind of tell some of those stories. So we're going to try this out and see how it goes. Um, but we certainly want to get him involved as well because those are some really cool things that he may he may be able to share that you may have never heard before. So um, I'll let Stephen take it from here. Tim, Thomas, thanks for having me on. Uh, yes, I've got a lot of stories on junior golf. Uh, thanks for giving me the opportunity to tell them. My favorite, probably my favorite all time, uh, is a Tiger story where he was playing in Vegas I think he was 16 years old. He was playing in our junior am with me and our sponsor. And we were lucky enough that day to have Art Selinger, the two-time world champion long drive gentleman. And he was out on the 15th hole hitting drives for every group that came through. Well, I'm walking through the parking lot up to the clubhouse and here comes Tiger. And Tiger doesn't say hello, doesn't say good morning, doesn't say anything, just simply says, what hole is Art on? And I told him, and I said, don't worry about that. Come on, we've got it. We're playing with our sponsor today. And Tiger was him, you know, just goofing off. It looked like he was hitting a bunch of weird shots until he got to about the 12th hole. And then you could see him start dialing it in. We get to hole 15, Art's up there, gives a spill, saying, I'm going to hit a drive. You can use it if you like, if I hit a good one. Uh, but you, go, you all hit, and then I'll hit. And so all the amateurs hit except for Tiger. And Tiger looked at Art and said, Art, why don't you hit first? And Art says, Tiger, this is my show. Hit the ball. So in Vegas, the Fairways are green. The browns are burnt, hard, rough brown. And Tiger hits this sweeping hook 
that bounces on the hard pan a couple times and goes right into the middle of the fairway, par five, about 500 yards, 505. And I look at Art and I could see the blood had drained out of his face because Tiger wanted to outdrive Art, you could tell. And Art got up there and hit this mammoth drive. He hit it so high and so far, it was just a thing of beauty. We all rushed to the carts, go down to the two golf balls that are there. One's 105 yards from the green, one's 100. They both hit it over 400 yards. And Art had him by five yards. And we're walking back to the cart. Art puts his arm around me, he says, don't ever say anything to anybody, but that was the best drive I've hit in my life. And I just thought that was the coolest story of, of Art Selinger, who is a great, great guy, great big guy that uh, now owned the World Long Drive Contest. Uh, and what Tiger wanted to do as a junior golfer. Thanks to Stephen for coming on. Um, I think it's going to be a real cool segment here as we move forward, hearing a lot of those stories, a lot of things that maybe you didn't expect and something that hopefully some of these tour pros can listen back on and maybe smile about uh, here as they listen into the pod. Yeah, for sure. Stephen's always got always got great stories and and he's really the only one that can tell them because he's you know been here through it all so um coming up here on the ajj schedule we've got a number of really big tournaments um obviously the the nelly invitational is coming up the mizuho we got the mayakoba event now um that's got added to the schedule um all of those coming up in may so some really great stuff um and we got some questions actually from some of our listeners and they were you were asking various ones about the ajj and how things work so we're going to probably look at doing um some spinoff stuff on instagram uh with some reels and some Instagram stories answering some of those questions. So definitely tune into those. Uh, you can find that at AJJ Golf. That's our Instagram handle. It's also our X handle. Um, and then you can find us Facebook um, American Junior Golf Association. So definitely check all of those things out and uh, we'll be answering some of your questions on there. And feel free to submit questions. You can definitely DM us on any of those social media channels. And we may answer some of them, you know, actually on the podcast or we may do them kind of in spinoffs like, like I said. So uh, definitely keep those questions coming and uh, Thanks for listening. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, guys.